Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Middletown Presbyterian Church this morning. Uh, I would remind you that this morning the youth are doing a pancake breakfast downstairs right after worship, so uh, if you have the time, come down and join us uh, for that. Um, tomorrow is the last Primetime Plus gathering uh, for before the summer, uh, so come out tomorrow at noon in the chapel uh, to hear, it, it almost sounds like Kim Fink and her backup singers, but our, our worship team <coughs> um, will, be, will be singing along with you tomorrow at noon, uh, plus a fine meal, uh, so come and uh, join us for that. Uh, next week is Memorial Day, so immediate, well, probably five or ten minutes after the service, we will be having our uh, Memorial Day uh, service out uh, at the grave of John Johnston. Uh, so you can come and join us for that. Because of that service, uh, our healing service, which we usually have on the fourth Sunday right after worship, uh, we are going to move to the first Sunday in June. So we're just pushing it off a week uh, because we'll uh, be doing the Memorial Day service next week. Uh, also, June 1st, uh, we are going to recognize all of our graduates. So if you have a graduate or if you are a graduate, uh, please get uh, information on that uh, to our office, um, or you could probably see Beth Shoemaker, who is here somewhere. Um, oh, she's downstairs uh, helping get the breakfast ready. That's right. Um, all right, so that's on the June 1st. Also, uh, coming up on Monday, June 16th, uh, the annual men's golf outing, uh, which will be down at Rock Manor in North Wilmington. Uh, so if you would like to sign up for that, you can see Ken Schreffler who's in the back here. Uh, and so I think that is all of our announcements for this morning. Uh, so I would invite you all to stand as we begin our worship singing our gathering song, God of Wonders. The words are on the insert in your bulletin.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Praise, Praise the Lord. You may be seated. For God so loved the world that He gave His one, His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but should have life everlasting. With that wonderful promise, let us now approach God's throne of mercy and grace as we confess our sins together using the prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we confess how hard it is to be your people. You have called us to be the church, to continue the mission of Jesus Christ to our lonely and confused world. Yet we acknowledge we are more apathetic than active, isolated than involved, cold-hearted than compassionate, stubborn than obedient, legalistic than loving. Gracious Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive our sins. Remove the obstacles preventing us from being your representatives to a broken world. Awaken our hearts to the promised gift 
of your indwelling spirit. This we pray in Jesus' powerful name. For God did not send His Son to condemn us, but rather that we might be saved through Him. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please remain standing as we sing uh, our next chorus. I will call upon the Lord. The words are in the insert in your bulletin. If you do have a yellow prayer card, please pass those to the center where Linda can collect them. Uh, and if the children would come down front as we sing for the children's sermon. May be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. So good to see you this morning. Now, we were just singing, The Lord liveth, blessed be the rock. The rock. There's a rock for you. seems kind of an odd thing to, to relate God to a rock, especially when you're seeing the Lord liveth. <laughs> Rocks don't seem very alive. In fact, it's, it's not alive. It's, it's a rock. It doesn't, it doesn't eat. It doesn't drink. It doesn't grow. Sometimes if, you know, water, rain and stuff, it, it wears away, it might get smaller, but it, it's not a living thing. So it seems kind of weird to compare God to, to this rock, but if it's a big rock, I mean, like this communion table, like you guys, you can hide behind it, it can give you some shelter, but you know, not only does the Bible use a rock to describe God, but it also uses it to describe us. We are to be like living rocks. Now, again, that's kind of weird because rocks are not living, but it says to be like living rocks. You know, when, 
when we go on vacation, we like to go hiking. And sometimes we like to go hiking in the mountains. And I've noticed that a lot of times when you get close to the top of the mountain, people seem to do this weird thing. They, uh, they stack rocks along the path in sort of weird ways. So you're walking along, and all of a sudden you see this little pile of rocks. Now, if you just saw this sitting by the, by the path, you probably wouldn't think much of it because it's a rock, and you're out in nature, hiking on a mountain. So what? But when you see a bunch of rocks stacked like that, you take notice because you don't usually find rocks just stacked like that by themselves. And so you see it and you think, huh, somebody must have been here. And somebody must have stacked those. And it catches your attention. And you know, the Bible says that we are to be living stones. And we're to allow God to build us into a spiritual temple. Because then we will attract the world's attention. People will go, Hmm, that's not the way we find people just in nature. Look at them. They're, they're loving and supporting and encouraging one another. And we are built upon the rock of Jesus. And so when people look at us, they should see something different than the rest of the world. We should get their attention by the way that we love and support and encourage each other and that, I think, is what the Bible is talking about when it says that we should be like living stones built into this spiritual temple to allow us to show forth God's glory to the whole world. Now, let's pray together. Lord, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus, that you sent Him to live and to die for us. Lord, help us. Help us to commit ourselves to living for you, that together Together we might show forth your glory that people might take notice and they might want to join you too. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, you can go. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29, and can be found in your Pew Bible on page 439. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. The word of the Lord.
Good morning. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful morning, for this new opportunity to gather as your people, to listen to your word. And Lord, we pray that you would pour out your spirit here, that we might hear directly from you. Bless our time together. Fill us with your spirit and send us out into your world to do your work. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to turn in your Bibles. Uh, we're towards the back of the Bible in 1 Peter. Chapter 2, starting at verse 4. Come to Jesus, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of Him who called you out of darkness and into His marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're in this series, Got Life? People of the Resurrection. And we've been talking about how God wants us to have life, to have abundant life, and how we can have that abundant life by following God. But somehow this whole concept of living stones seems very strange. I mean, the, the Bible is full of imagery of, of rocks and stones. We've sung about God as our rock. Rock of ages, the choir just sang. But a rock... A rock isn't living. There, there is no life in a rock. It's, it's hard and cold and rough. And it's always perplexed me why, why we use this imagery, not only to talk about God, but he also says here that we are to be like living stones. What, what does that really mean? Well, it occurred to me this week, it, it was kind of a tough week, uh, you may know. Uh, yesterday we had a funeral here uh, for Jay Robertson, young man, 34, former member of my youth group here. And at times like that, I think we sometimes, we want to be like stone, unfeeling, because it hurts too much. We, we, we want to cast off those terrible feelings. We want, to, we want to be strong like stone. But the fact is, 
That isn't living. As I was thinking about it, life really is about, about relationships because it is in our relationships that we find joy and happiness and peace. Hopefully, but it's also risky because when you're in relationship, when you have people that, that matter to you, people that you care about, it hurts when you lose them. But all of that is, is part of life. Those who have loved, it is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. We need, we need each other. We need relationships, but, but they come with difficulties, with uncomfortableness, with, with pain, and sometimes heartbreak. And I think, really, that's what Jesus was, was getting at. I, I think that's what Paul or, or Peter is getting at in this Scripture. You see, he doesn't say that you are a living stone. He doesn't tell the individual Christian that you are to be a living stone. It is plural. The, the you in this passage is plural. You, the church, are to be like living stones. And as living stones, allow yourselves to be built by God into a spiritual house. When stones are put together, they can create a shelter. They can create a home or a church or a temple. And when they're put together, each stone supports another. Each stone is next to and under or above another. Together they are all working together. They're all supporting one another in something greater than themselves. We need each other. We need each other so that when when those difficult, tragic, painful times come, we are there for one another. But perhaps the greatest part of this passage is that, that Jesus Himself is the cornerstone. The cornerstone is, is laid first. And the cornerstone is the one that that guides the placement of every stone that comes after it. So they're, they're aligned, so that they, they come together in a useful way. And so the cornerstone is laid first and every other stone is laid according to the placement of that corner. And that's what, that's what Peter that's what God is really saying to us in this passage is Jesus has been set. He is our guide. He is our cornerstone. But we together are to be built into a spiritual house, into a place, into a, an organism. Paul uses the, the il illustration of the body with its many parts all working together. Because although that's what we need, it's not always what we get in the world. In fact, the world seems to move further and further away from, from relationship, from community. Today, we have all of these social websites on the, and we connect 
sort of in cyberspace somehow. We spend most of our time in front of screens, whether they're computer screens or television screens or, or smartphone screens. We desire relationship. We need community. And the church should be a beacon of community. It, it should be the place that draws people into community. And if we, if we allow God to build us into that community, if we allow God to work among us and to build us into that spiritual house, people will notice. Because it's something they're not getting really anywhere else. Be like those piles of rocks I described to the kids. When, when you're walking on a trail in, in the woods, there are always stones scattered everywhere. But then suddenly you come upon a, a pile, a stack of rocks. And you know they didn't just happen to fall that way. They were placed that way. And it, it grabs your attention, and, and you begin to wonder, I, I wonder who traveled this path before me. I wonder who it was that, that put these stones together. In the same way, God wants to build us into this new, amazing, spiritual house where we... We are the stones. Jesus is our cornerstone. And people will notice. They will see how we support and encourage one another. We'll see, they will see how we live together in community. And they will come. Because that is the desire of our heart to be in community with someone else, to know that somebody has our back, that somebody cares. And unfortunately, the truth is, every one of us is going to experience some loss or tragedy, some, some sadness, some difficulty, and we need each other to get us through those times. We need each other working together with the Spirit of God to love and encourage and support one another. Because that, that is really living. That is living life to the full. Living in community loving and giving and supporting and encouraging. That, that is real life. Let us pray together. Lord, this life is not always easy. In fact, it is frequently not easy. It can be difficult it can be filled with tragedy. But Lord, we desire, we desire to love and to be loved. We desire to be in community and in relationship with other people and with you. But we are also afraid. We are afraid of being hurt, of being disappointed. And yet, we desire it. Lord, give us strength. Fill us with your Spirit that, so, that, so that we can truly love you and, and love one another and live together supporting and encouraging one another. Give us the strength 
to carry one another when we are in need. Help us, Lord. Help us to live this life truly and abundantly in Your Spirit. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand with us as we sing, Build Your Kingdom Here. be seated. And let us pray. Lord, we do thank You for this day. We thank You for that song. We thank You, Lord, that, that You want to bring Your kingdom, that You want You to bring Your kingdom to this earth. But Lord, we also know that that means that You have to start with us. Build your kingdom in our hearts. Help us to turn our hearts and our lives over to your reign. And as we gather here to worship you, we want to lift some of those uh, that are on our hearts and minds who are in need. And Lord, this morning 
We think of uh, Jim Wilson, uh, who's in the hospital. Uh, he's had some internal bleeding, and uh, after having some surgery, uh, he does seem to be doing well and hopefully will be discharged today. But Lord, we lift him to you. We pray that you would heal uh, this internal bleeding and, and Lord, that you will just bring him back to health. We pray that uh, he, will, he will be back home uh, today or soon and uh, back in worship with us. Uh, but we just ask your blessing upon him and we lift up Jerry as well as uh, she worries and cares and uh, just give her uh, strength at this time. Uh, we lift up Sharon Colson. Uh, who is having gallbladder surgery this week. And Lord, we just lift her to you. We pray that you would strengthen her body for the surgery. Uh, we pray for her doctors and surgeons, that you would be with them and give them the wisdom and the knowledge and the skills that they need, uh, that it might be a successful surgery. And we just pray that you would be with Sharon uh, in her recovery process as well. Lord, we give you uh, thanks for uh, the way that you brought uh, both Pam and Stephanie Dempsey uh, through their surgeries this week. and. Uh, that it seems to have been a success and they are uh, recovering well at this point. Uh, but Lord, we just continue to lift them to you. Uh, pray that you would be with them in the recovery process. Uh, and we just pray that uh, they both are able to, to fully recover and that this uh, gives Pam a new lease on life and a new start uh, and uh, that she will be uh, now healthy for a good long time. Uh, we ask your blessing upon them. We also lift up uh, Bill and Jane, and just pray that you would continue to support them as they support the family uh, and just uh, add uh, your blessings. Uh, we also want to lift up uh, Robin, who seems to be having some serious eye problems, and we just uh, lift Robin to you and pray that you would um, heal her eyes, uh, help her as uh, she goes through this period. We pray that they will find out what is causing it and, and Lord, uh, get her back to health and wholeness as well. Uh, Lord, we also <clears throat> want to lift up the Robertson family on the loss of Jay this past week uh, in a Sunday, sudden and, and tragic way, and we just pray, Lord, that you would um, strengthen them at this time, that you would help them to feel your presence among them, uh, and that you will help them uh, over time to, to see um, that there is, there is hope and there is light uh, in you. And Lord, we just pray that you would be in their midst. Uh, we also want to lift up um, the family of uh, Julia Hackett uh, and just uh, pray that you would be with them this week uh, and give them strength as well as uh, Julia passes. And uh, Lord, we just ask uh, for strength for that family. Uh, and Lord, uh, there are certainly many others on our hearts and minds that we may not have shared publicly, but. We lift them all to you, trusting that you will be active in each life, in each situation. Uh, and Lord, uh, we offer ourselves that if you can use us, that you would fill us with your spirit and send us. Uh, but Lord, we also want to give you thanks for uh, the many blessings uh, that you pour out upon us each and every day. And uh, this morning, we, we lift up Claire Thompson, who is leaving this week to go on uh, six weeks of study abroad, and we just... Uh, rejoice with her in this opportunity, but just pray that you would give her travel mercies as she goes uh, and pray that she has uh, a wonderful trip and comes back to us safely. Uh, Lord, we lift all of these things to you in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our ushers will now come forward. We will continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day and for the many other blessings that you pour out on us each and every day. Please accept these gifts that we offer back to you. Multiply them and use them to bring and to further your kingdom in this world. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join hands for the benediction. Friends, it says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time to gather there's time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones together. We have been gathered and now we go out to be scattered. But know that as you go, God's spirit goes with you. Allow him to strengthen you and do that which he has called you to do in Jesus name. Amen.